I'm Automatic and we are going to make stop motion puppet armatures today. Now this is pretty much what we're going to mill. Uh, before we start, there's a couple things that you need to know. You need to know this is really dangerous. You don't want to do this uh, unless you have adult supervision or you are over 18. I definitely recommend having safety glasses and a pair of gloves unless you want to like walk around like this with no fingers or this. Alright, let's get to it. First I'm going to take this piece of round steel. This is a 3 16 inch, just regular steel. You can get any hardware store. I'm going to measure off about 2 inches and cut that off because that's what I need for this particular piece. But, if you were, uh, uh, I would highly suggest to sketch out your design ahead of time so you know the exact lengths of all the pieces that you're going to need before you go into cutting it and everything, which I've already done, and uh, before you start doing this. So, let's, get, let's do it. This ain't no exact science, you can just get it really close now, so we're just gonna mark it off there. Now comes the fun part. Now we're gonna secure this piece in the vise here. Now I have this jeans here so that it, the uh, vise won't actually mess up the metal, it won't scratch up the metal here. Which is always good because you don't want indentations or any kind of nicks or anything in the metal that you don't want there. Well, this is my favorite part. Make sure again you got safety glasses and at least gloves on because this stuff can be really dangerous there. There you go. We just chopped that off right there. Now this is really hot so I'm going to put it down. <laughs> Now I was just using the uh, uh, just the angle grinder to cut that off with the cutting wheel on it. There you go. Take a look at that. That's good stuff right there. That thing is really, really, really mean. Now if you can see up close, the edge on that is a little bit nicked. It's not quite as perfect as you might want it to be. So what we're going to do, I'm going to take this, unhook that piece of metal from the uh, vise there. I'm going to drop this right in this little vise. Snug it up. Then we're gonna take our little Dremel tool here. Any kind of Dremel tool will really work. And then just grind that little puppy down like so. And that's not too bad. That's workable. We're gonna cut it and grind on it anyway, so that's cool. Okay, now this is just your eight inch, regular 8 inch drill press and we're going to take a piece we just made there, we're going to loosen it up, put it up in there, hang on to it till it gets, gets pretty snug, get it up in there, we're going to want at least about a half inch hanging out and then a little bit more for play, because so once you start grinding on this sucker, you don't want to get your fingers too close to the rotating press here, you just might lose it. Awesome. Now you're going to take your Dremel tool again and we're going to start with that and once you turn that sucker on it's just going to sit there and spin and spin. We're going to take this we're going to... Now you're going to start like this here about maybe wherever you want and just run on down like that. Now you're going to continue to do that and shape it. You can also take one of these metal files right here and shape it like that. Just grabbing hold of it, barely getting in there, and just grinding it and shaping it. Now this is going to take a little bit of getting used to in time until you actually can get some stuff going on there. All right, unhook that, there you have it, quick and dirty. Now you can sit there and refine this a heck of a lot more if you really want to. Uh, that's just me showing you exactly the methods that, that, that I'm using to make these little ball joints. Now we're going to move on next to the actual brackets that they twist inside of, so uh, there we go.
Good stuff, eh? Alright, now I have taken this uh, 116 brass uh, plate here. This is, uh, and measured it already, marked it off uh, about 5 eighths each spot using the little template that I made earlier. But basically, we're going to cut this part and then we're going to grind it down. We're going to drill holes into this so that these, uh, those, those little ball joints we made earlier are going to rest up inside there. So this is going to hold it all together. So I'm going to secure this puppy right in the vise here. Take a drilling tool, which I have put a uh, different cutting wheel on there. A little cutting wheel. Put this puppy apart here. Okay, now I've already made a little punch template, so I'm going to like group this punch template here with the holes lined up, laid over on top of the brass that I've got. And I'm going to use this flat clamp here, line it up about as good as I can get it with the, the brass like this, and We'll clamp that down pretty good because we're going to take this right here. Now this is a punch. This punch right here, we're going to use, and we're going to just punch each one of these holes right here. Now what that does is when we go to drill it, that's going to give us really good little indentations to start with. Those little punch holes right there. I don't know if you can see it or not, but there you go. Those little punch holes, just for a good start. Home All right, now what I've done is I've taken our brass piece here, clamped it down inside the vise here, and I have put a 632nd bit in our drill press. We're going to crank that on, and the little holes that we just punched are going to catch the end of that drill bit and going to go through there real nice without sliding all around. But do not force it because it will pop right off of there. All right. Now that we have drilled our three holes, I'm going to take this little bit larger bit, I believe this is one eighth bit, and I'm going to open up the middle hole just a little bit wider. This will allow free form for our set screw. That's nice. That way this one is just a little bit wider. And this, all three of these are exactly the same. Now we're going to grind on them. Grinded them down. This is what they look like. They could be a little bit prettier, but you can mess with it. This is just what I'm going to do for right now. Now, I'm going to tap this middle hole on this other one that is smaller than this one. I'm going to do that using a 4mm uh, or 440 tap right there. And you gotta go slow or you'll mess it up, you'll booger it up. You gotta kinda go in a little bit. <clears throat> there we go. Done and tapped. And what you wind up with is something akin to this. It moves really nicely. Very smooth, very fluid. And you can get you some smaller screws if you want. Usually set screws or anything like that is good. Socket head cap screws are really good. Depends on the project you're working on. Alright. Now bear in mind what I was doing was just machining parts of an armature. Not the entire thing. That was just an arm. I'm going to show you some of the other uh, prototypes we had made. This one here looks really good. But drilling on the uh, round surface kind of gives it that offset thing. and <laughs> totally fail. Let's fail right there. Uh, this is the one that we made earlier. That's pretty cool. Now we can refine that a lot more, spending more time, give it a little love. Uh, this was another sort of incarnated design that we tried to do where we split it and tried to put the ball in there and it didn't quite work out. So, you know, uh, that's a fail. This was an elbow joint that we made. Now this one's actually pretty cool. The, uh, the split elbow like that is one that we've been messing with. The only problem is a little bit of the stickiness, but that's due to the machining, I believe. And we can refine that a little bit more. Uh, that was the prototype we were playing with. Uh, and then, of course, there was the one that we uh, we worked on today. This one is, of course, the one I'm going to be using for my puppets. Uh, you can do whatever you want. This is just how I'm doing it. You can refine it. You can make it look pretty. It's going to be hidden with clay, so, you know, it's up to you. But if you cut your arm off, it's not my fault, all right? So be safe.